see all of the fields are white. There are when you have a true love relationship, believe me, that's visible to the world. And that's where evangelism starts, is your relationship with the Lord. You've got to focus on that before you focus on what you're going to hand out or pass out or do something with another, with another person. The problem is, and again, take that picture of if I had a glass here filled to the brim and I poured more into it, what's going to happen? It's going to spill all over the table. It's going to make a mess. So our tendency tends, is to say, stop. We don't say more. If, if somebody's pouring that water into the glass and it's overflowing, you don't say more, you say stop. That's, right. That's the natural man. We need to be happy with that holy mess. Yes. Because out of that holy mess will come yes. new life. I'm telling you the truth. Right. Now the second thing, let's picture this. If you have that earthen vessel or that glass, and you want to touch lives around you, mm -hmm. another thing you can do, remember they didn't have spouts, all right? they didn't have faucets on them, yeah. All right, take that, take that glass and turn it upside down. Or pour it out. Or pour it out. It's going to touch, it's, then it's going to touch people around you. But that will really make a mess. And that's why in the natural, it were, you know, it's like so, I don't want to do that. All right? We don't want our lives turned upside down. Think about when you are willing to surrender your life to God and say, use me, Lord. Use me for your purpose, all right? Look at the Apostle Paul. Or well, let's back up a half step and look at Saul of Tarsus. Okay? Mm -hmm. Saul of Tarsus, and I'm, and I'm open over here, in, in Philippians chapter 3. Just listen to this for a second. I'm just going to read um, from verse 4. Paul says, Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, which is in the law found blameless. In other words, Paul was a guy on a fast track to success. He was a Pharisee among the Pharisees. He had a bright future ahead of him. All right? But he had an encounter on the road to Damascus with Jesus Christ that turned his life upside down. And it made that holy mess. It took him from that place. Now, I just want to go back. I want to read something else. Because I want you to get this, all right? I want me to get it, too. In 2 Corinthians chapter um, 11, all right? I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Just some of the verses, starting at verse 23. Paul is talking to the church of Corinth, and he says, talking about... Other people that are preaching the gospel, some not rightly, right? And he says, are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. I'm more so. In far more labors and far more imprisonment, beaten times without number, often in dangers of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, Dangerous from my countrymen, dangerous from the Gentiles, dangerous in the city, dangerous in the wilderness, dangerous on the sea, dangerous among false brethren. I've been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights and hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. He went from being on a fast track to ultimate success in Israel. To a mess. To the glory of God. <laughs> to the glory of God. Because he allowed God, or God chose, to turn his life upside down and pour, put such treasure into Paul and kept pouring it out around the world that changed the world. Hallelujah. Turning that earthen vessel upside down can lead to a very, very radical life. Yes. Okay? And it all has to do with your attitude when this is going on. Well, it has everything to do with your attitude. But it's not going to happen until you get to that place where you can pray. And we've talked about this so many times in the program. Where you pray like Jesus did. Yes. Not my will. Amen. But thy will be done. That's right. we, when we start, this, and I said this, this program is geared towards the bond servants of Jesus Christ. And those bond servants of Jesus Christ, by definition, are people who have said to him, 
not my will, but thy will be done, who have surrendered their wills to Jesus Christ. All right? Mm -hmm. Let me go back to that example. Now, again, picture this glass, earthen glass on the table, filled to the very brim. And I've talked about just overflowing, filling it up till it overflows, taking it and lifting upside down. But you know what? The single most dramatic thing I could do with that full glass is take it and hit it with a hammer. Pow! As hard as I could. Because what would happen? That water inside that glass or whatever would explode out. It would shatter. It would, it would shatter and then it would just burst out. Okay? That's evangelism. Okay. You know, I, I love this verse. It says in Proverbs... Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20, it says that the tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. Now, before I was saved, you know, I was a business consultant. I was involved in sales and sales training. And I had always heard this expression growing up in the world. Uh, you know, you're a silver tongue devil. Well, that's a lie from the pits of hell. It is the righteous who have a silver tongue because that's what the word of God attests to. So that struck me when I when I was first saved. I'm thinking to myself, now why is that? Why is that? Why is that? So I, I did a little, spent a little time studying and having conversations with the Lord God Almighty. And here's what I was told. One of the qualities of silver is that it is sonorous. Now what that means is that when it is struck, it gives off a beautiful sound. This is why they make the finest bells out of silver. Silver bells. silver bells. Because when it's hit, it gives off a beautiful sound. Want to talk about evangelism? You want to talk about having that love burst forth? Jesus Christ, hanging on a cross, when he was struck like no man before him or after was ever struck, he said, Father, forgive them. He gave off a beautiful sound. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Satan, blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let Satan 